So recently I was on the phone with Dr. McCullough. Yeah, that's right. He contacted me and said, Harley, we need to talk about this high carb thing. I want to understand more where you're coming from. So that's pretty cool that McCullough contacted me with the intention of learning more. That's pretty cool. It's pretty genuine, pretty legit. And I've been a harsh critic of McCullough in the past. I said he had Botox. He put his face next to the camera. McCullough doesn't have Botox. So he called me out on that one. But well, so I had a bit of a discussion that the, the line wasn't that good, the Skype connection wasn't that good, so hopefully I'll do a few more, few videos like this where I can answer some of the questions we're talking about. And McCall was like, you know, Harley, I'm not too sure. Like, you know, I talk to a lot of people. Well, okay, this is, I understand where I understand where Joe's coming from. And Joe sent me a, a link of uh, the Rosedale diet. And Rosedale diet is Ron Rosedale. And his premise is that carbs cause obesity – because when you have carbohydrates, it raises your insulin levels, insulin stores, everything, eat as fat. So the secret is get rid of all carbohydrates and you won't have any fat problems. <laughs> look, look how skinny I look, man. I eat more carbs than anybody I, I, I know. And anyone who eats as much carbs as me is as skinny as me. But anyway, so the reality is where do we start? So I looked at the Rosedale diet, calorie steak. It's about 50, 60, 70 grams of protein in that. So, and that's it. And then the rest of the calories have to come from, from the olive oil. So we've got six. No, no, no. By doing this high fat, low carb thing, your stuff and just, just metabolically damage insulin levels going up will not raise it enough unless you have the animal protein in there, animal fat. This is why you, will, you won't see a whey protein in your body. Your insulin level will spike the fuck up. Your insulin growth factor one, you just, you just weigh. You, you weigh more, pun intended. You weigh more. So to, the way to get heavier is to increase the whey content of the food. The animal, and uh, I like to do this, I troll around, and, and um, I see these two uh, obese mother with a overweight daughter who will be obese soon because she's eating like a mum. And I just, I just hear the conversation as I'm walking in the aisle, oh, I don't know about the cereal, like, what's the sugar content and stuff like that. Like, oh, okay, I've got to stop and <laughs> do a YouTube video at this one. So they're talking about the cereals, and the lady's like, oh, I'm not sure which one to get, blah, blah, blah. It took them like about a minute and a half, two minutes, to choose what cereal, and then they got a little small packet of muesli, and then they're walking down and walking behind them, pretend I'm not stalking them, and then they come to the chocolate section, and they just grab. Mum goes, "I have 50 percent of your body weight from fat. Eat a high fat diet. Cereal, five percent calories coming from fat, roughly. If you want a low body fat, eat a cereal based diet, high carb diet, fruit based diet, the best. Fruits the best. And then they come back to the, the Chinese people." Uh, some people out there say that Chinese people have the highest obesity and high diabetes and the people can afford the meat because it just spikes your insulin. It creates all that fat. Anyone who's involved in diabetes, concerned about it, look up Dr. Neil Bernard. Here's his book just here. That's the book to read. This is peer-reviewed medical studies published. Dr. Bernard, fat is the issue in diabetes. So what happens in China? People get more money. China be Thailand where people were like, are you lost? Why? Are you? The scorpions were free. They were that big. They crawled through the night. Me and Freely, we slept in this like mosquito net. <laughs> I called it the scorpion net. <laughs> Who cares about the mosquitoes? It's got these massive, look like crabs walking across the floor. I loved it. I mean, we loved it. But that's where we lived in Thailand. The animal product used in Thailand from the vegetables is a token gesture, a little bit of mashed potato. All right. That's what's happening. If you want to beef up, you need to eat the beef. Talk to the bodybuilders, talk to some wrestler. They go, fuck that vegan diet, fuck that fruitarian diet. I'll get too skinny. Take insulin on top of that. Insulin is what's going to cause the weight gain, the mass gain. If you want to, despite eating as much fruit as I want, as much carbohydrates as I want, I'm pouring half pound, pound bags of organic sugar into my fruit smoothies to get enough sugar these days. Pouring it in. So people say, well, you'll love me in a year, and they're still fat. Because they eat so much fat and meat. They're like, oh, Harley, you know, you're like, I know you train less than me and you fucking look like a Tour de France rider. You've got the same body of the Mason Nix as Bradley Wiggins and Contador and you're looking like you're doing 1,000K a week when you're doing 100K a week over winter. Oh, I couldn't eat a vegan diet, man, because my family and all that. And that's cool. But that's up diet. You can tell because the performance was sucking. So you go to Kenya, best athletes in the world, high-carb diet, fastest runners in the world, Johan Blake. Usain Bolt, high carb diet. High carb diet. Johan Blake eats up to 30 bananas a day. He's sitting in a blog recently. Uh, Usain Bolt did his dad's going, oh, the secret is the plantain and the, the, the yam, the Jamaican yams. You know, we had 
it's carbohydrate is key. ATP, even McCola, gun runner on a high carb diet. If your diet makes you run slower, if you're on drugs or whatever, if you're running slower than you would otherwise, it's not healthy. You got a rose fat diet and perform okay, but put them on a high carb will perform better. Any athlete, any sh- we just feed them meat. <laughs> We're going to feed the horses meat. Look at the trainers going to be performances less than it normally was if we're on drugs or whatever. You know what I mean? They have all the same variables, and the only thing you change is eat more carbs or drop your carbs right out. Performance is going to go down. Even if you're on EPO and shit, like, no, no, what about Thailand? What about China? What about Africa? These people are not starving in these, in the, you know, yeah, there's starvation and wander and stuff like that. But I'm talking about people who have enough money to feed themselves. They're not skinny because they're starving. People go, oh, in China, they're starving. In Thailand, they're starving. They're not, I've been there. They're not starving. They've got enough money to eat all the corn and rice they want. They have. But the reason why they're skinny and slim, regardless of their fitness level, it's the same as the fruitarian community. Everyone's fucking skinny long term, man. 100%. Because the food is lower in calories than the meat and shit. Try and eat 3,000 calories in a meal from fruit. And then try and do 3,000 calories from animal products, meat and shit, Big Macs, whatever. Easy. I used to eat, I used to, I used to go to Pizza Hut and eat 5,000 calories. You go to a vegan pizza kitchen and eat a low fat vegan pizza, you're going to be too full before you smash out at 5,000 calories. So, yes, calorie restriction is part of it, but it's not like it's an incidental calorie restriction in that the plant foods have less calories than the animal products. But then again, to be more confusing, a calorie is not a calorie. Okay, what do I mean by that? If I eat 3,500 calories a day from fruit, I'm not going to look, feel, perform the same as if I eat 3,500 calories a day from animal products, am I? My insulin level is going to go up. I'm going to start store a lot of fat, a lot of weight, a lot of food retention. My kidneys are going to pack up, increase the chance of heart disease and stuff like that. Calorie is not a calorie. Calorie is not a calorie. They're similar, but they're not in that. Does that make sense? Go and find someone who eats 3,000 calories a day from fruit for 10 years or five years. Go and find someone who eats 3,500 calories a day from donuts fried, mostly fat in the donut calories, meat, steak, dairy, eggs, fish, blah, 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 blah. They will not look the same. Get twins and do that. They're not going to be the same. Don't lock them in a cell for five years. No exercise. 3,500 calories from fruit and rice, 3,500 calories from animal products. No exercise. Nothing. Lock them in, tie them down, strap them in. Obviously, we can't do that, but in your head, you've got to know, fuck, the twin who's eating the fruit and the carbs is going to be skinny as fuck, and the person who's eating the fat, they're going to be fat as fuck. The fat you eat is the fat you wear unless you're living on 800 calories a day, the Rosedale diet. Yes, you'll lean up, but you'll get metabolic damage. You'll be binging and purging later on, and I see it in the supermarket. I see it everywhere I go. So that's my little rant and critique. The cyclists and cycling's all about being as skinny as you can get, but still have a lot of energy, so you can pedal the bike. I choose high carb diet. I like to run. I like to have energy. I choose a hard carb, a high carb diet. And if I had to be a sumo wrestler, I'll, I'll be. I'll be honest. You cannot be a sumo wrestler on a vegan diet, high carb, low fat vegan diet. You cannot. You cannot be a three hundred pound bodybuilder on a high carb, low fat vegan diet. And if we go to India, if we go to China, 1,000%, the people shooting up uh, insulin from diabetes, 1,000%, they're eating over 10% of daily calories coming from fat, 1,000%. There's no, you're not going to go to China, right, and, and see someone, a little Buddhist monk, you know, just walking around, just, you know, just doing whatever in the garden, eating their rice and eating their vegetables, a bit of fruit, a, a full-on vegan Buddhist, you know, you're not going to see them eat their rice and then shoot up some insulin afterwards. All right, I've got to shoot up the insulin now. <laughs> They're not going to have, you're going to go to China. You're going to see some stockbroker who's like, you know, 250 pounds and just like sweating. And he's just like, oh, give me steak, give me steak, all oh, deep fried pork. You, you're not going to, they're going to be shooting up the insulin. Think about it. The, the skinny people in Asia are living on rice and the fat people in Asia are living on fat. They can afford the deep fried pork and all that shit. That's how it is. Go to India. And the skinny people are living on rice and corn and bananas. And the fat people are going, fuck that peasant food. Give me the cream. Give me the extra ghee, the organic shit. Give me the meat and all that stuff. Because that's what the Western eats. And the West is the best. And fuck all this dal and rice and stuff like that. That's like peasant food. <laughs> that's a dollar a kilo. That's just like 
for your poor people. I want the rich stuff. Rich food, rich people, makes us fat. We can go back to the kings and queens back in the day. What did they eat? They didn't want to eat the peasant food. That's how you separate how it is. But today you can cast a, a crew from Alexander the Great or whatever or King Edward V just by walking down the street. I'll pick you, I'll pick you, I'll pick you because everyone looks fat because they're eating like kings and queens in terms of food choices versus caloric content. 100%. I don't know what, how many times I have to repeat myself, but look at all the free tarians and the McDougal crew long term. Everyone sucks right up. That's bottom line. Carbs. Carbs are key to weight loss and health. High carb diet, vegan, low fat, 100%. No question. No question. This is, it's done. It's, <laughs> it's done. It's done.